Hi Reception, I'm going to read you Yucky Worms and I love this book because it's got a really lovely story inside but it's also got lots of facts, lots of information about worms so I think we're going to learn loads when we read it. One day when I was in Gran's garden, Gran dug up a slimy, slithery, wiggly worm. Yuck, I said, throw it away. Throw it away? Gran looked horrified. Would you throw away one of your friends? You can't be friends with a worm, I said. You can't even tell which end is which. Yes, you can. Watch. Gran put the worm down. It gave a kind of squirmy wriggle and disappeared really fast, pointy end first. As the rounded end vanished, Gran said, there goes its tail. I bent to look down and I could see it had left a little tunnel. Where's it gone? I asked. Home, Gran said. It's an earthworm. It lives in the earth. And at the bottom here, there's a diagram of a worm and it shows you its body and its insides. So this is the mouth, the head end, where the food goes in. And down at the other end is its bottom, where the poo comes out. And inside it's got a tiny little brain at the head end and five pairs of hearts. Oh, and look at this skin. It says it's covered in mucus, which makes them really good at wriggling. Do worms eat earth too? I wanted to know. Worms eat tiny stones and bits of grit, Gran told me. And they eat other things as well, like rotting leaves and flowers and fruit and dead insects. They especially like eating at night when it's cool. The stones and grit help to grind everything up in the worm's stomach, and then the worm poos it back out. Gran pointed at the flower bed. Look, can you see? I bent down and I saw a weird, long, curly worm made of earth. That's worm poo, Gran said. It's called a cast. You know when you recycle things? Well, worms do it too. There's still a lot of goodness left in the things a worm eats. And when the goodness comes out again as poo, it helps plants to grow big and strong. And as the worms move about under and over the earth, the poo gets spread around the garden. And that's why worms are my friends. Gran gave me a thumbs up. It's not just their poo that's good for plants. The tunnels they dig loosen the soil so roots can stretch out and air and rainwater can get in. But it's dangerous being a worm, Gran said. I stared at her. Dangerous? She smiled at me. Lots and lots of animals think worms make the best sort of dinner. Can you see this mole shopping list just says worm, 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 worm. Birds love them, said Gran, and so do moles, badgers, frogs, hedgehogs, foxes, even some slugs eat worms. And human beings slice them with spades and spike them with forks. It's a tough life. Cutting them in half doesn't hurt them, Gran, I said. They just turn into two worms and keep on growing. Gran shook her head. Poor worms. Lots of people think that, but it's not true. She put her fork down. Time for a snack. And it says down here that a worm's tail can regrow if it's cut off, but cutting a worm in half will kill it. So you have to be really careful when you're digging in the ground. Gran had tea and I had orange juice. Can I dig a worm up? I asked. If it rains, Gran said, the worms will come up on their own. I took a biscuit. What if it doesn't rain? Gran winked at me. We'll use the watering can and pretend. I finished my biscuit as fast as I could. Can we trick the worms now? It says over here that worms breathe through their skins. So they don't mind the earth around them being wet, but if their tunnels get flooded with water, then they come up to the surface to breathe. So that's why you can see more worms on the ground, at the, on top of the ground just after it's rained. Gran went to fill the watering can and I watered the earth. Then I stood back. I didn't want worms chewing at my shoes. They only put their heads out, Gran promised, and it'll be a while before they do. Gran was right. I had time to eat two more biscuits before she said, Look! Wow, I said. I could just see the tip of a worm above the earth. Now watch this. Gran stamped and the worm disappeared. Did it see you? I asked. Gran shook her head. 
Worms don't have eyes, but they feel vibrations, and a thump like that might mean hungry bird alert. Danger! Gran dug her fork in the ground. Up came lots of earth and wriggly worms. She picked one up and washed it in the watering can. I mustn't drop it in, she said. They can't swim. Gran put the clean worm on some paper and held it near my ear. I could hear a rustling noise. What's that? They're covered in little bristles, Gran said. The bristles and their muscles help them to move. I've got muscles too, and I bent my arms so Gran could see. If you've got so many muscles, she said, maybe you'd like to help me plant my sunflower seedlings. OK, I nodded, and then I thought of something. When I go to school on Monday, I'm going to say that I've got lots of new friends. Good idea, Gran said. Actually, I said, I might not say they're worms. The end.